what's up everybody out there in learning land, Tyler from 10thumbspro.com coming at you with another guitar tutorial like we do every single Monday. Today we're going to go ahead and explore guitar arpeggios for you beginner and intermediate players out there. These concepts make great ideas for rhythm as well as soloing. As always, I'm going to have all the tabs on the screen so you can follow along, but if you want a printable version in the PDF format, you can get one by becoming a Patreon for this tutorial and all our tutorials with links up here in the notes. Check the description as well, you'll see some other cool links, including my email if you want some one-on-one -on -one lessons. Okay, go ahead and grab your guitar. Brain and attention span. Once you have those three things, follow me on in and let's break this lesson down together. Come on in, let's do it. All right, so the first thing that we start with is the chord progression that we're gonna be playing. And we're gonna play an A chord to a B minor to a D to an E. And we're just gonna do four beats a piece. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And for the strum pattern, why don't we just go. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. So that's established the song, right? You can write lyrics to it, you can play it. That's what you have, that's your song. Maybe it's a cover, maybe it's an original, but that's what we want to turn into arpeggios. So, of course, the first thing that we need to check is our A chord, okay? So we wanna turn the A chord from that into this. Which is an A major arpeggio. So the first thing you have to locate is the root note. The root note is here on the fifth fret of the E string. How do I know this is an A note? Well, it's tuned to open E. There is no uh, sharps or flats between E and F. So it goes E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So the fifth fret is the A note in standard tuning. That's what these lines here are for, and that's what you see dots here for. Those are kind of like mile markers. So I can get to the fifth fret easily, and I know it's an A note. Memorizing that the fifth fret of the E string is an A note is beneficial in your guitar career playing, okay? okay. So in a major chord is composed of three intervals, the root note, the major third interval, and the fifth interval. So, the next note we need is the major third. To find that, you go down a string to the A string and up one fret. Fourth fret of the A string. So we have root, third interval. And just chugging away at those two notes, can be a cool A chord or going back and forth between the two of them. There's one more note. This is a C, uh, this is a C sharp note, by the way. A, A sharp, B. No sharps are flat between B and C. Memorize that, because it's B and C and E and F. And then the C sharp. So that's the major third. The fifth interval is the only interval we're missing, and that is the seventh fret of the string below. So to locate that, you go down one string and up two frets. To review, root note, major third, down one string, down one fret, fifth interval, down one string, up two frets. Five, fifth fret, fourth fret, seventh fret. Okay, so that is your A major arpeggio. Very, very cool. So now we can take this. just playing a random rhythm you can be much more intentional with that why don't we go one and two 
three, and four. Okay? Now we can take this a step further and directly below this note here, one more string, you have the octave, which means it's another A note. That's where our A notes start over. A, C sharp, E, A. That is our A major arpeggio. So in our chord progression, the next chord that comes up is the B minor. A, A sharp, B. So we got our B note. Now, if we were to make a B major, we would go down a string and up a fret. This is our major third, but we're doing a B minor. So the B minor is down a string, down two frets. And this is the minor third of your B minor chord, which is a D note. Luckily for us though, the fifth interval is in the same spot. Down a string, up two frets. And the octave is directly below the fifth again. So your fifth interval and your octave in relation to your root note are in the same exact place. But your third interval, instead of being the major one, is one note further. One and two and three and four. Let's do that. Let's go one and two and three and four for our rhythm. So now we have one and two and three and four. So that turns this into this. Cool. So we have our A major arpeggio and our B minor arpeggio. So the next in our chord progression, A, B minor, is a random solo. No, just joking, it's a D chord. Okay, so for our D chord, to keep this concise, we're actually gonna find the root on the A string. A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D. Okay, so our D note, it's a major chord, which again, same formula, root, major third, fifth interval. And the cool thing is, to find the third interval from the A string, you go down a string, down a fret. It's exactly the same. Making the fifth down a string, up two frets, the same as well. And the cool thing is, the root, the octave, directly below the fifth interval again. So that is our D major arpeggio, exactly the same, really cool. The next in our progression was the E. D note, D sharp, E. If you want to, go ahead and hit pause right now and try to figure out this E on your own. Okay, so hit pause right now. All right, so now if you hit play again, it's because you figured it out. Or you just said, you know what, you can just show me. We want the major third, down a string, down a fret. We want the fifth interval, down a string, up two frets. And we want the octave right below that. These are also great vocal exercises. Um, up on this E is a little too high for me, but you can also practice singing triads, not just scales, right? Da, 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 da. So there's your great vocal exercises as well. 
So now we have our whole progression. You can use any of those notes in any order you want because they're chord tones. So you can use this idea to create riffs. You can use it as rhythm if you're the second or third guitar. You can use it for soloing. You can mix it with scales. So imagine, for example, I'm in a solo, and over the A and the B minor, maybe I'll just do the pentatonic scale. But I mixed it with arpeggios at the end. So it's a great tool for soloing, okay? But it's also a great tool for rhythm. So you can use it, great tool for rhythm, okay? Now, you can take this a step further with the seventh extensions. So this is gonna go from a beginner arpeggio lesson now to somewhat of a pre-intermediate lesson. In the key of A, your one chord becomes an A major seven. Oh, oh, Tyler. So jazzy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 10 Thumbs Nightclub. I hope you brought your velvet slippers and you plan on spending a little time. So you have your A major seven. The next chord you have is the B minor seven. The next chord you have is D major seven. And then your E7 becomes, or sorry, your E becomes an E7. Okay? So we need to locate these seventh intervals. For the A major seven, when you find your root, the octave is the note right below it. So for the major seven, you find the octave, the A note, and you play one fret below it. That note right there is what turns your A arpeggio into an A major seven arpeggio. The B minor seven, you find your seven by finding your octave and playing two notes below it. Which, if you find your root, would also be just two strings directly down. So you find that octave, your next, your next B note, you go down two frets. So that's your B minor seven arpeggio. D major seven arpeggio. Well, we know from the other ones that the strings work the same, so you find your D note on the octave and you play one fret below it. And then lastly, your E7, you take your major arpeggio, Find your octave and go two frets down. So that's the difference between a that's the difference between the two major seven and a seven arpeggio is one note below the root or two notes below the root. You add the sevens to the groove and we get. Let's go one and two and three and four. Okay. And 
again, that's me mixing the scale with the arpeggios. So that is how you create with the E and the A string, major seven, ar a, a standard triad arpeggio, a major seven arpeggio, minor, minor seven. I'm gonna drop my pick, oh wow, no. And then your dominant seven or your seven arpeggio, okay? Again, use these tools in your rhythm. Try to create different, uh, different guitar parts for them. Mix up the order. Play them over the chords and have a lot of fun with them. Your next jam as your friend is doing... Play over right over the top of them like that and you'll create some really, really cool things. Now, the arpeggios, you have more shapes to these. This is just one shape um, and one root. There are arpeggios in other place on the guitar. So the world of arpeggios gets deeper than that. In fact, you can even play certain arpeggios over different chords. Like if you were to play the B minor seven arpeggio over the A chord, you would start to add a couple intervals. You would make it, well you'd add the ninth interval for example. You'd add the sixth interval. So we would kind of make it like a A six over nine suspended four chord for example. But what I'm saying though is that you can experiment, have fun and play the arpeggios over different chords. It doesn't have to mean E chord, E arpeggio experiment and see what sounds good to your ears because you might find some really cool surprises and that is arpeggios for beginner players again this is meant to just kind of show you how to create them at this point the experimentation and the creativity is totally up to you have a lovely day and i will catch you next monday for your next guitar lesson let's do a random solo My wife's sleeping, so I'm not going to go too crazy. All right. Take care. Have a lovely day. Cool, everyone. Thank you so much for watching to the very end of this tutorial. Here at 10thumbspro.com, we appreciate you trusting your learning to us. These ideas are great for your rhythm and your soloing. They're going to make you a better guitar player. So go ahead and explore the fretboard, apply them to some chord progressions you know, invent some new chord progressions, and have some fun. All right. Catch you next Monday. Remember to subscribe. Hit that bell so you never miss a lesson. Think about becoming a Patreon. There's a fly in the studio and it's like that one episode of Breaking Bad. It's making me crazy. Woo. Okay. So, and then, um, oh man. And then, so subscribe. Think about becoming a Patreon. It will accelerate your learning and we'll catch you next time for our next lesson for guitar on Monday, ukulele on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Take care of yourselves.